Um, and so I'm going to transition a little bit into just just talking about Move Minneapolis itself for folks who don't know, we are um, an affiliate that actually merged with the Minneapolis Chamber back in 2019. So this was complementing the Chamber's goals of really trying to make sustainable transportation uh, one of its core pillars. So um, this enabled the Chamber to be able to elevate Move Minneapolis to its members and also help inform its advocacy priorities and also really, um, again, just make sure that Move Minneapolis was a um, continued to be an ally here in the downtown Minneapolis community. So for a little bit about us, um, simply put, we empower people to choose sustainable transportation options. Um, and we envision a future where everyone can make transportation choices that contribute to a healthy, sustainable and vibrant region. Uh, we're federally funded. We are a nonprofit here that really looks at how do we work with downtown Minneapolis employers to encourage and promote sustainable transportation choices. So sometimes that means that we'll consult on things like commuter benefits, like we'll talk about today. Sometimes we'll do uh, employee lunch and learns or engagement opportunities to help educate employees about their options. Uh, we're out in the community a lot. Our, we have some team members out on Nicollet Mall right now at Downtown Thursdays, um, just promoting sustainable transportation as a whole to the community. Um, and we also do one-to-one -one customized consultations um, and really help folks with some of those unique needs that they might have around trip planning. Uh, so definitely encourage everyone to reach out um, if they need help. Um, we're here to serve the downtown Minneapolis community. And John will also talk about some of our counterparts that exist throughout the Metro. And I know some of them are on the, on the call today. So thank you for being here. Um, and really with all of this, you know, we're looking at um, how do we be of a, a res an ongoing resource for folks. You know, it's not a one and done um, situation where, you know, you plan to commute and that's it. We know that people's situations are evolving. We know that circumstances are constantly evolving. Um, and so we wanna be there to help support, you know, throughout those journeys, especially in this hybrid uh, post pandemic world. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, John. He's gonna share a little bit more about what we do and how that really relates to uh, the open enrollment season and commuter benefits. And then we'll go into the discussion with Sarah. So John, turn it to you. Thank you. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, as Tiffany mentioned, I'm John Barbs, outreach manager for Move Minneapolis. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, so as she mentioned, um, we are a transportation management organization, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the services, options, and programs that Move Minneapolis provide for employers at no cost. And next slide. Um, so Move Minneapolis is a transportation management organization, and we are not alone. Uh, there are five transportation management organization partners with very similar miss missions, and we cover the entire metro area. Now, if you can see that little teeny orange dot right in the center, well, that's New Minneapolis. That's our territory. Uh, we, uh, we are small, but we're mighty. Uh, we're in the core of downtown. We serve the downtown community and surrounding neighborhoods. And within that little orange dot, uh, there are 216,000 people that work and 58,000 people that live there. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Move Minneapolis works together with many transportation organizations and partners. Um, and we're the one that kind of provides the menu of all of these partners that you see listed in all of these logos. And there are some that aren't even on there. Um, so uh, we kind of provide the menu of options for that the services that these folks provide to employers, downtown commuters, and downtown residents. Next slide, please. So why does this matter? Well, there's both a high demand for sustainable transportation options, and there are tremendous benefits for employers and employees. Next slide. People have options. And in this chart, you can see how people currently travel and how they would like to travel. Um, and so, Today, 50% of current trips, that's commuting, shopping, uh, visiting, et cetera, 
are taken by driving alone. However, only 22% prefer to drive alone on a consistent basis. So that means that there are a lot of other options there. Uh, given the tools and resources that are available, um, we would like to be able to encourage people to try some of the other modes, and that's that's part of our end goal. Next slide. And as Tiffany had mentioned, um, transportation is Minnesota's largest source of greenhouse gas emissions, counting for roughly 25% of the total uh, state's total. To help combat this, the city of Minneapolis wants 60% of all trips in Minneapolis to be sustainable by 2030. It's part of the, the 2030 Transportation Action Plan. And the city of Minneapolis has built an extensive, and are currently still building extensive biking and walking infrastructure. And that will help improve safety and access. And on the transit side, uh, there's new bus rapid transit lines, BRT lines that have opened up in the past few years. That includes the orange line, the C and the D lines. Ridership is up 11% year over year um, uh, for transit and BRT or bus rapid transit, which converge into downtown Minneapolis accounts to, for 25% of that increase. So these investments are making progress towards the 2030 plan goal. Next slide. Now we already know this intuitively, that car ownership is expensive and the annual cost of owning one of the top five selling cars, according to AAA, the Automobile American Automobile Association, it is over $12,000 last year. That's $12,000 each year when you factor in car payment, insurance, maintenance, depreciation, gas. And that doesn't even include expenses like parking. So uh, it's a very expensive uh, thing to own a vehicle. Now, with better transportation options, perhaps a two-car family can go down to a one-car. Or if you're an individual and you live in a centrally located area that's served well by transit and other uh, sustainable transportation options, perhaps you can sell your one car and uh, be able to get by with all the other options. And when the occasional need for, for a vehicle is needed, uh, you could go to options like car share, for instance, our car and EV. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at some of the sustainable options that are available. Um, it's not one size fits all, as Tiffany had mentioned. Um, it's more like being able to choose off of a menu a la carte. Transit might work great several times a week, and then perhaps on Fridays, you'd like to take a bike in and do some bike commuting. Uh, the main thing is you can mix it up. You don't have to do the same thing day after day, Monday through Friday. Next slide. There are four types of transit options that serve downtown Minneapolis. Uh, for instance, many suburban commuters uh, prefer to use a park and ride and they can hop on an express bus. Um, now, during the pandemic, express bus service did go down quite a bit, but those routes, many of them are being increased in frequency and some of that were canceled altogether are coming back. Um, Bus rapid transit, I talked about that, BRT, um, it's growing quickly. Currently under construction, there's the Metro E line in Uptown, the B line, which is along Lake Street in South Minneapolis, and the Gold line, which is connecting Maplewood with downtown St. Paul. All of these projects are currently under construction. And the really big construction project that's, that's going on and has been going on for quite a long time is the Green Line Extension LRT, or light rail that would connect downtown Minneapolis with Eden Prairie. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of activity that is taking place um, within the Twin Cities uh, to help bring people into downtown Minneapolis uh, via transit. I didn't mention that there are more folks out there besides uh, Metro Transit. There are five transit authorities that would include 
Southwest Transit, Maple Grove Transit, MVTA, or uh, Minnesota Valley Transit Authority, and Plymouth Metrolink. They all serve downtown Minneapolis. Next slide, please. So the next best thing to Uber and Lyft, but much more affordable, are microtransit uh, services. And you have a, a downloaded microtransit app, key in your destination, and a minibus will make curbside pickup in a matter of minutes. Um, the rides typically cost between two and five dollars per trip. The microtransit operates in the West Metro, North Minneapolis, and Dakota County. And the five transit authorities that I mentioned earlier, they all provide a service of microtransit. It doesn't cover the entire Twin Cities, but it does cover a good portion. Next slide, please. Carpooling. Well, Minneapolis is really fortunate. In downtown, we have the ABC Ramps Mobility Hub, and it offers the best parking discount for contract parking. $20 a month if you are a registered carpool. And Move Minneapolis uh, does the carpool registration and verification for the ABC ramps. So $20 a month, you split that with a carpool partner, um, you split the gas and everything else, and you're talking costing less than the, the price of lunch for uh, an entire month's worth of, of parking. When you compare that to regular contract parking, which goes between $140 and $300 per month, it's a real bargain. Not to mention, it's a lot funner to be able to drive with somebody. To help with ride matching, Metro Transit uh, through metrotransit.org. Next slide, please. So Minneapolis was again rated the top biking city in America. And we take active transportation very seriously. Minneapolis's all ages and abilities network is growing with new and improved infrastructure. And here's a photograph of our latest champion, Bryant Avenue, South Minneapolis, which has been receiving a lot of national accolades as a um, off-street uh, protected bike lane uh, that really connects uh, part of South Minneapolis right up to downtown. Next slide, please. So if you have a meeting down uh, across the across downtown, you're meeting a friend for lunch or just want to joy ride on uh, the West River Trail for your lunch break. Um, we've got some great uh, shared uh, bike and scooter services, Lime and Bio. Uh, it's a great way to get there. You download an app, you can find your, uh, your scooter or your e-bike nearby and uh, book that and go to your trip. It's a lot easier then if you go to the parking ramp, get your car out, drive a half mile, park again in another ramp and pay for it. Um, and it's a lot more fun. So uh, there are some great little stopgap things for the errands that you have that could pop up during the day and get you where you need to go. Or you can just have a lot of fun as well. Next slide, please. So how can Move Minneapolis help employers connect all these transportation dots? And many workplaces have an open enrollment period in the fall when benefits are renewed uh, or re reviewed and changes are made. In preparation for open enrollment, now is a really good time to uh, connect with Move Minneapolis on transportation benefits. So you can schedule a meeting with us, invite Move Minneapolis to your company benefits or health and wellness fair, and we can help inform employees of their available transportation options. Boom Minneapolis offers transportation webinars, presentations, lunch and learns, and workshops as well. Next slide. So we offer a transportation benefits consultation. We work with employers to set goals and develop commuter benefit uh, benefits and programs and options that need both of the needs of the organization and their staff. And here's an example uh, of uh, some folks that just received their MetroPass cards. It's a program that's offered by Metro Transit. 
that offers discounted rate for uh, for commuting in or to use for your regular purposes. It's basically a 31-day um, pass, unlimited use that's assigned to a particular uh, worker. And that's a benefit that's available through the employer. This is just an example of some of the programs that are available through employers for their staff to help them get around. Next slide, please. So moving the Apples can help with programs for affordable commuting for both the employer and for their staff. Um, for instance, contract parking is very expensive for an employer to provide for their staff. Uh, and on the flip side, if the burden lies with the employee, it is pretty expensive to pay for your own contract parking, uh, factor in gas, the extra stress for um, fighting traffic um, during rush hour and so on. So when you're talking about um, both uh, um, incentives um, and also retention for employees, that's where commuter benefits really pay off for both the employee and for the workforce. Next slide, please. So it's important for uh, to know how the staff comes into work and what are the pain points for your staff when it uh, pertains to commuting. Are there commuting options and programs that could help them? So we do customize employer commuting commuter surveys and then we do some consulting and do a follow-up uh, post-consulting uh, survey that is available to understand really how employees are, are coming to work, um, how the various benefits can, can really impact them and help with uh, some behavior change. And, uh, and then be able to measure results. So those are just some of the services that Move Minneapolis offers. Next slide, please. So the move and Move Minneapolis does not mean a moving company with a fleet of trucks. But we do help businesses relocate downtown by helping navigate some of the, the commuting challenges. So when a suburban company that is used to acres of free parking relocates downtown and their employees are faced with an urban landscape, and oftentimes that can be a big shock. So Move Minneapolis can help make this transaction transition easier, affordable, and more sustainable. In most cases, once employees become familiar with the logistics of downtown, they love working there. You've got all the wonderful amenities, the restaurants, the culture, and the entertainment that are just steps away. So help we can help make that transition into downtown Minneapolis go much smoother. Next slide, please. And Tiffany mentioned this, uh, for individuals who have questions about commuting sustainably, Move Minneapolis offers a no cost customized consultation. This can be for trip planning, for a biking, uh, bike commuting, carpooling, transit, or uh, shared e-bikes and scooters. Customized consultations provides a free 15 minute virtual session and or it can be done in person. And you're able to talk through your circumstances, your preferences, and have a customized solution created for you. There's no cost for this. And this is something that we do for downtown employees and residents. And I kind of gave a cross section of, of the various services that we, uh, we cover. Um, uh, if there are any questions about that, um, please uh, put that in the chat. We're gonna now um, move into our conversation with Sarah. Tiffany, you were going to make it. <laughs> yes, Sarah, um, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, I will just going to turn it back to John to um, to bring us into the Q and here, but Q and A here. But Sarah, um, maybe you want to share a little bit about yourself, um, your your role, and your background uh, with the group. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, so I am the Minnesota office leader for HNTB, which is a 7,000 uh, team member strong national engineering firm. 
Uh, we focus nearly entirely on transportation infrastructure. Um, we provide planning, design, program management, construction management, uh, an employee owned company, I should add. We're very proud of that. Our Minneapolis office has right now about 60 employees. Um, and I'm gonna say 20% uh, of that is actually interns for the moment. Uh, my background is as an urban planner. I've been in the industry for, for 20 years. So I'm an urban planner and a, and a transit planner by background. So these uh, topics are very, very dear to my heart and are what I'm passionate about. I'm really happy and excited to be here. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. John, I'll turn to you to lead us into the uh, chat. Yeah. Well, welcome, Sarah. Um, and we had an opportunity to chat earlier, and uh, in the story, um, your story with uh, HNTB is really pretty fascinating. Um, and uh, uh, for instance, the workplace environment and culture um, is very vibrant. Uh, you were awarded the Star Tribune Workplace of the Year for 2024. Um, uh, you had a major move in the past year from uh, a Golden Valley location into downtown. Um, so a lot of changes, a lot of uh, uh, internal things going on. At the same time, you're uh, a design and infrastructure um, a focused company. And so you're working on projects that impact the commuting and uh, transportation of the Twin Cities and nationally. Uh, so you're, there are offices throughout the country and as you mentioned, over 7,000 people that work for HNTV. Um, so we're really fortunate to have uh, an office here in the Twin Cities and uh, and have uh, some of the work that your, your organization does um, available uh, to use and things that are coming online. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the work culture at NTV? Yeah, sure. Uh, so one, I, I, I want to say, you know, as an employee owned company, we are uh, values driven. And that starts at the at the top of our firm with our CEO. You know, we have a very strong uh, corporate doctrine and vision for where we want to go, which is to be the dominant U.S. Uh, transportation firm in the U.S. Uh, market. Unlike some of our competitors, we are, you know, 95% all in on transportation. So if you look at some of our peers, they're in a number of sectors like oil and gas. Uh, that is not what we do. We are focused on transportation. And then we have a, I'll say our, our side hustle is sports architecture. And we're equally proud of that. We just des uh, designed the 49ers Levi Stadium, Allegiant Stadium. We're doing the Oakland A's. Um, we do a lot of university um, sports facility, but that's all sports architecture. So in terms of, I'm going to say the, the broad umbrella of our, our corporate culture, our philosophy is taking personal responsibility, um, expecting more of everything we do discovering what's important in any situation, collaboration and building relationships. So when I say relationships, we have two primary clients in Minnesota that we focus on and we do serve others, but our primary um, client is the Minnesota Department of Transportation and Metro Transit. Uh, we also have been a longstanding partner of MAC, um, the airport, the Metropolitan Airports Commission. HNTV has been in Minnesota for 65 years. So we're 110, over 110 years, 114 actually at this point, we were founded in 1910, 1914, 1910, sorry, 1910. Um, and so we, we're really proud of that history. You know, we designed the original, the Stillwater Lift Bridge, um, the Hennepin Avenue uh, suspension bridge that is out there right now. And we're working on the rehab of that. Uh, we also just finished up the third uh, rehab of the Third Avenue Bridge. So these, you know, we're we're very proud of our work. We understand that our work um, leaves a legacy in our in our community. Um, we designed the Orange Line BRT, 
that you mentioned earlier. We're incredibly proud of that. That just won, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some national awards from the engineering industry, which is very important for us and Metro Transit. Uh, first of its kind, and I'm very proud to have personally worked on that. And then we're also the program manager for the Gold Line, BRT. So, um, and I'm not working on that as the project manager. And, and I mention all these because um, this really relays for me into our, what are our values? And what as a company do we do with our resources and the choices that we make? So when we were relocating from uh, Golden Valley, or I should say it wasn't a given that we were relocating. Our lease was up, we had to make a decision. And this happened right as I was coming in as the office leader. I relocated from Chicago, a very rich uh, transit and multimodal community where I could, I biked and rode and uh, rode transit to work. I didn't drive. Um, one of my concerns in moving here was that our office was in the outer ring of really the, the to say that in the downtown metro, um, strange, even though it's you know, four miles, not a long drive, it's still not a walkable context um, for our staff. And so talking to our CEO, he said, we'll move the office downtown. That's where I want all of our offices to be. We serve transportation, um, the transportation industry. We do not serve the single occupancy vehicle industry. There's a difference, right? So with Metro Transit and the work that we do, um, we really felt it was important to our values um, and uh, provide a business advantage to be downtown for recruiting, particularly uh, new grads, uh, new grad engineers and planning professionals. You know, being in Golden Valley, we were not in a transit rich environment. We were also kind of at the edge of a Venn diagram as I like to say, I'm like now we're at the center of the Venn. I can attract employees from the far Eastern extents of the Metro region, as well as the West and North. And that makes a difference. So since I've been uh, office leader, we've grown our employee count by 35% and our revenues are nearly double that in growth. So it's, it's very impactful. Um, and I felt like that it was very important that we would be able to live our values. So we want to support Metro Transit. We want to support MnDOT and MnDOT doesn't just build roads, but they're looking at ways, uh, as you noted in your, your earlier portion of your preservation presentation, you're working with them, carbon emissions reduction, uh, greenhouse gas reduction. They have to address these issues too. So we wanted to move to a place where employees have options and we could attract a greater uh, talent pool. A long answer. I have lots to talk about. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's that's great. I, and you you talked about the move from Gold Valley into downtown Minneapolis. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, how that impacted your staff uh, and yeah. um, and, and uh, how they embraced or maybe um, had some speed bumps uh, in the moving process itself? Yeah. It. It was not, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like it wasn't an easy thing to do. Um, it required a culture shift internally. We have, um, you know, people get comfortable, get comfortable in their cars um, and just with what they know. And, and there was a fair amount of just uncertainty, right? So it was important to me as we were going through the relocation process, to be open and transparent with the team and bring them along. So I'm a planner by, by training. I applied that at work and I shared that process as we were going through the deliberations. I didn't hold back and say, and keep that information and then drop the, the ball on them. Like, Hey, we're moving downtown. I brought them along in the conversation and talked about what, we were considering both in terms of specific locations, but the pros and cons of um, transit access, bike room provisions, and cost, and whether or not parking was included and kind of weighing that together. Uh, so I was open with them. 
we did, you know, once we, we knew really where we were going to go and it, it wasn't a given, uh, I did have to get approval for our lease and our specific decision from our corporate team um, and had their support. But I'll tell you some things that made it easier is that the cost of the market is really the same. Uh, folks will, will point out, um, our team, point out, oh, well, there's no, there's no free parking downtown. Like, well, I have news for you. There's no free parking anywhere. One, right down shoot the high cost of free parking. It doesn't exist. We all pay for it. So we either pay for it in our lease or we pay for it directly. So now we get more out of those dollars. Um, so I was clear about that and kind of bringing our planning lens, but um, you know, we, we also brought the team downtown. Once we selected our space, we're like, let's go preview it. Let's show you the floor that we're going to have. And so you can see it and get excited about it and start to envision that. And we did a, you know, an afternoon tour followed by a, you know, a little happy hour celebration or, or gathering kind of to build that culture start building that culture. Um, we shared with them information about the design decisions that we were making as we were building out our, our space. Um, our space was not going to be ready when our lease was up. We did make the decision to go ahead and move anyway. Uh, our building management worked with us and we were one floor above. Um, our permanent space that we were building out. So the team got to see the build out in progress and we'd go down and check things out that built a lot of excitement. Um, but we also, that kind of gave us this opportunity to get downtown in the summer when it's really enjoyable. There's a lot happening. You could see the excitement with the twins game and Nicolette mall. And um, then once we moved, we, had a training. Um, the downtown improvement district, the chamber came in and met with Tiffany. We did session with our staff to talk about all the things downtown that, you know, how they could get oriented, um, the attractions, some of the services, the, the downtown improvement district and chamber, you guys were all awesome. Uh, we talked about security. That was definitely a concern. So we wanted to get people comfortable. As a staff, I had um, some folks kind of step into the lead. You know, we had to address the parking issue. And we did a lot of research on what the cost of parking was downtown um, and looked at different ways we might address that to kind of, I, mean, I don't want to say make our team whole, but to to soften that transition, help that transition. So we um, didn't, we, we structured a program where we would pay for transport, some form of transportation until the end of the year. So about five months. So we either offered to pay for parking or provide a transit pass um, up to a limited amount. We capped it. Uh, so we were able to get folks uh, give them time to figure out what option worked best for them. Uh, so they didn't have to kind of commit to an agreement for a month and say, hey, that's not where I want to park. They could test things out. They submitted receipts and we reimbursed them. We had team members that stepped forward who had already worked downtown to kind of be sort of an ad hoc champion. Like, here's how we navigate the Skyway. Here's how you can park it the A, B, and C ramps and make it to the building. Here's how this works. We, as I mentioned, you know, we're working on uh, Metro transit projects, both Southwest light rail and the gold line. And we have staff that used to work at Metro transit. So we are really tuned in to the services and passes that they offer. We signed up for the Metro pass program. We have continued that participation um, employees do pay for it on their own, but it is hugely subsidized. You do that. So um, we can't, we're not able to do that through our corporate benefit program. So we set up an office benefit program and we administer it ourselves. So we pay for it. And then the employee, we work with the employees, but you know, that's about a 50% saving. It's, it's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, um, activities that we've worked on. We have sort of a 
again, these ad hoc champions, a bike champion who organizes rides right now. They're doing, um, we were supposed to do a ride yesterday. We replaced that with an industry. There's an industry event. Uh, Women in Transportation Seminar was doing an event riding out to Hopkins to learn about uh, sustainable buildings. So they did that and we changed ours to next week. Uh, so there's lots of activities around that. Um, we've tried to really create just an overall culture and, and workplace that is vibrant and positive. We, we have a great space that we're right at the corner of Nicolette and um, Fifth Avenue with the light rail, the system that we're super proud to have worked on. We can see the Twin Stadium for, and our bridge projects. Uh, that we work on along the Mississippi. So those are really, these are recruiting tools for us. And um, we also, as a national firm, we do travel a lot. I travel a lot. We have corporate leaders come in. And the fact that we can take light rail door to door to the airport is amazing. I will tell you, you have to be careful, make sure you get on the wrong train. I did that my last trip and I ended up, by the time I looked up, I was in St. Paul. So um and there's just a lot of activities that we've really done to build this uh, culture of sustainable transportation. And it's it's been great. Um, we've had a real a really positive feedback with the employees. And, you know, that is evidence in our growth. Um, we have 12 interns this summer. Uh, last year we had six and we were kind of downtown for half the time and in Golden Valley half the time. Um, but everybody knew we were moving, so they were okay with that month of their internship that they were out in Golden Valley. And we were able to retain our interns over the school year, which was awesome for us. And it's one of our priorities as we're growing is to bring in that top talent from the university and being connected to the U is, is part of that. Um, and our interns and new employees have told me they would not have joined our firm if they couldn't get to us by transit. You know, and we have employees that bike from Minnetonka, long haul bikers, we have people that use one wheel um, changes. We've had a lot of change in mode uh, since we've moved, including some some doubters that now take the MVTA out from uh, Lakeville. So we're really proud of that and proud of what we've done and proud it's, to earn that top workplaces. It sounds like you, you've created that just a new culture or a, a, a change as far as how people were thinking about it as compared to uh, when you were at the, the Golden Valley location. Uh, mm -hmm. Or at least more people have, have signed on and are enthusiastic about it. Um, especially yeah. You talked about the, the office champions and uh, that, that that's tremendously important. Are there any, is there any advice that you would give to other employers about um your experience and, and in transportation uh, in general? You know, um, I would say we're, we're a little unique in that we have a lot, as an engineering firm in transportation, plant, transportation planners, we have a lot of skills and resources on our own. So, you know, we did a commuting study like the firm did when they were looking for places, like we're understanding where our employees live. Um, to be able to understand kind of what market, where we wanted to be located. Um, so I feel like we're very attuned to that. But as I listen to you, I still learn a lot just through your presentation about some options that I know we haven't tapped into. So I encourage folks to reach out to you um, to engage you for those services. It's really important, I think, to bring people along and give them things not just to think about but to experience firsthand and do trials so you know some of our our long-haul commuters were the ones who were just like oh man uh, I, I i'm not i'll i'm gonna go along because i'm gonna toe the line and um but again i've had that person who now commutes um on mbta from Lakeville. It's like, I love it. It's so awesome. I get right on the bus and I can get to work it in, in a way it actually shortens his day because he was getting into the office, still had that drive and get doing as much work. Now he can do it on the bus and it's super comfortable for him. Um, another employee who 
does not take transit, but has that long drive, you know, she was, she was not really on board. I would say she's one of our biggest advocates because of the culture in the office and the location, the views. I mean, it's, it's a package deal. You can't do, I don't think you can do one without addressing the others. And that was one of my primary goals when I came into this role was really a culture shift and get us to think about our work, our professional work differently. How are we aligning with our clients? Where are we um, in supporting transit and being able to live those values as a professional team and really understand what our clients are facing and help to build our, our relationship with them. So I think it's kind of multi-pronged approach. Thank you for that. And, you know, it's a really compelling story and we hear many of the same things that you pointed out uh, and experienced uh, over and over again from employers throughout downtown Minneapolis. And so, uh, you know, it, it takes those first steps, sometimes baby mm -hmm. steps. And, yep. You know, there are there are hurdles and barriers, but um, Move Minneapolis is there to help kind of overcome some of those things. And uh, the end result is really rewarding, as you found out with your own staff. Mm -hmm. It is. It's been it's been fantastic. And I'm saying like the the feeling in the office is is palpable. Right. There's a positive energy that. I, I can't account for it in, you know, it's not quantifiable, except when I look at our turnover, right? Our employee growth and our revenue growth. I mean, it's it's there. There's a business advantage for us. It is real. Um, but there is also just that qualitative cultural strength that we have gained by uh, through these choices. Well, thank you. I think we're going to switch into our, our Q&A session. Okay. Uh, we've got 10 minutes left. Um, Tiffany? Yeah, um, we got a number of questions in the chat. Um, so, and some of it has already been spoken to a little bit, but I'll just read them just in case there's anything else you want to add. And Alex, I see your hand. We'll make sure we uh, give you a chance to, um, to say your question. So, um, Jacob asked, what were the biggest pushbacks to moving town town and how did you respond to them? Uh, I spoke to that a little bit, but anything you'd add that... I mean, it was really, there were concerns about parking costs and, and safety. So the safety, again, we engage with that chamber, um, the downtown improvement district, and they've been really great. And we've heard positive feedback for the employees. They, they feel safe um, on the daily. Uh, in terms of, I think, uh, I'm sorry, the first part was, are, are we paying? I'm sorry. No, just were the biggest pushbacks to moving downtown. Oh, the biggest pushbacks. Um, it, so it was that that cost of parking. So um, we again helped subsidize. So the for the first five months through the end of twenty three, we paid for up to two hundred dollars worth of parking. Um, we do not subsidize that any longer. So it is for employees on their own um, to cover, but they have the choice of modes and how they want to get to work and where they want to park they want to bike or take transit so uh and then bridget asked is your company supporting change of heating slash cooling and building materials and then a second part is did you lose any people given the change to downtown um i'll start with the first one um no we did not lose anybody with our change to downtown we only gained uh yeah, with the question about engineering and, and materials, we don't, I mean, in the sports architecture, um, I would say, you know, we have a number of lead professionals and there's also an engineering version of that called Envision. We have a number of Envision sustainability professionals in the firm and they're always looking for new sustainable materials. Part of what we work on with the transportation sector, um, asset management is how do you prolong the life and help our of the assets that we have, which helps with um, 
emission, reduce emissions because of the cost of producing new asphalt and new uh, road building materials. Um, so uh, yes, but we're not we're not in a building architecture other than sports architecture, but they certainly do. They build those as lead facilities. Right. Uh, and then Maggie asked, um, she would love to hear more about the Champions Program and how you established that they're looking to launch something like that in their offices nationwide. Uh, you know, I would say that has is more ad hoc. Um, we've had, we have a strong leadership culture. Um, one of our um, guiding principles, we have 17 leadership characteristics that we uh, live by and we are evaluated on through our professional development uh, process. And they include, you know, developing others, being empathetic, um, courageous, uh, taking initiative. And so that has really, I think, led to the champions. They are, they're self-appointed. Um, they have stepped forward as like, hey, this is important to me. This is something I can do for the office. Um, and it's really powerful. It's not an edict. It is just totally authentic um, and organic through our staff. But I'm happy to talk about that because we did work with our, our building management to just say, hey, here are some improvements we could see, we would like to see, and are you open to these? Here's some feedback. Um, Sounds good. Um, Alex, do you want to uh, come off and save your question? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I really enjoy the presentation. Uh, Alex Hablamanitz, I'm a founder at Vista Climate. We help companies understand and reduce their carbon emissions. Um, question for you about bike sharing in Minneapolis. So I was, uh, you know, I've, I'm seeing a lot of studies that show that whenever there's bike sharing available, especially next to transit stations within a city that actually helps to reduce car um, usage even further. Um, and I was... So, so, so sad to see nice rides go away in Minneapolis. Any any chance that is coming back? Um, and then I have a, a second question for Thursday. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. We were so bummed as well. Um, but right now we have uh, Lime subsidizing uh, shared e-bike parking uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So um, those are um, dockless bikes stationed throughout the city. Um, but however, uh, we did learn that there is hopefully um, studies that are going to be taking place here for um, exploring municipal bike share programs in both Minneapolis and St. Paul as well. So no promises, uh, but at least there, yeah. I think that the absence of Nice Ride has um, forced um, local governments to explore what um, what solutions there could be. So Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, would love to see that come back, obviously. Um, and then another question. So I'm curious, what are some other cities that you know of, especially from like the, the engineering consulting standpoint that have done public transportation, right? And I used to live in Chicago too, and I used to use the bike sharing system and the L and everything. And Chicago is unique because it's really dense, but I'm thinking cities that are very similar to Minneapolis that are spread out. There's a lot of individuals who live in the suburbs and very few that live in a city. Um, so any other like good models for us to think about that you can think of to, to share on this call? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there are there are a, none, a number of them. And I will say that before I moved to Minneapolis, they were already kind of a gold standard um, for me in terms of what the city was doing with their their light rail BRT and the ABRT lines. Um, Pittsburgh has a has a great system. I used to live there. Um, they have the the T downtown. Their buses are fantastic. They're one of the first BRTs in the country um, with a dedicated transit way, and they've built that system out. And that's a really very hilly um, environment. So biking is much more challenging. But when you add um, bike facilities to your light rail, your streetcars, you're just increasing that hugely. Uh, Kansas City has been doing a great job with their um, system. They have a streetcar. They're working on building out. Uh, B they also have been a leader in BRT and are continuing to grow that system. Austin is doing a great job. 
They're working on building high capacity transit. They have some major traffic issues. They also have a, you know, an uphill battle in terms of politics um, there that make it extra challenging. Um, St. Louis is working on a, a new system. Uh, Raleigh has built out a great system as well that they're continuing to grow. There's also a lot of work in, in Miami, uh, in Florida, uh, kind of working on their challenges. You know, not only do they have the bright line trains, but then they also are working on a number of BRT projects. And I think they've got some LRTs coming up in like Fort Lauderdale. Um, so there's, I, I'd be hard pressed to say there isn't a place that isn't doing it, doing something and doing something really well. Um, look for places of congestion. I mean, that's this is how we address congestion. It's not it's not widening. It's not building more roads. So, well, thank you, Sarah. Uh, we have just a couple minutes left. There are a couple more questions in the chat. Um, if there's um, a quick opportunity to um, to speak to them, one is if any remote work options are offered, and then. The other was just employees' opinions on the skyways. Uh, um, <laughs> remote work. So we are an in-person firm. Um, I'm going to say, you know, it was it was two years ago. Gosh, it seems so long uh, that we came back to the office from the pandemic, and we, I'll say, we kind of slowly rolled that out, but really by Labor Day of 22, and then by the new year of 23, we, we wanted our employees to be in the office. Um, the way that we manage that is, you know, on our system and uh, it's not a punitive approach. We have shared that, you know, it's important for us to be together. It's important for our employees' professional growth to be able to ask those questions, those technical questions to get the mentoring that they need. Um, so that is our firm wide culture. So I would say in our office on any given day, we're probably at 70 to 80% capacity. Um, we are maxing out our floor space though. Like we're, we're kind of pushing the, the limits with, um, we do have a seat for everybody. So we don't have hoteling stations and Folks are expected to come in on the days that they can. We know that they're, they can't do that every day for child care, uh, life appointments, what have you. We want them to be in when they can be in and have there be a critical mass so that that is just who we are. And you know, we do that by creating a great place to be. Um, we do a lot of lunch and learns that are you know in person and we feed the team and we try to just make it a really positive place. Thank you. Um, thank you everybody so much for, for taking the time to be on this. I really appreciate it. We will make sure that all of the slides and resources and even some of the learnings were shared out um, in the recap email along with the recording. I encourage you to share it with anyone who was, wasn't able to join today. Um, save the date for our next webinar on August 22nd, um, 12 to 1 p.m. Yeah, more info to come on that. Really want to thank Sarah and John for sharing all this wonderful information today. Um, and just thank you all again. So I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you all in the next one. Thank you so, so much, much for having me. Great. appreciate it. Take thank care. you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Today as well. We are also recording this, so thank you for doing that. Um, the recording uh, will also be shared out after this uh, with folks, and we will look at um, putting this up on our YouTube channel as well for folks who weren't able to join the webinar.